So you've downloaded Rust and just joined your first server and would like to know how to get started in Rust. Well, you've come to the right places. In this video, I'll show you all the essentials you need to know about getting started in Rust. The things I'll be covering in this video are the maps and biomes, monuments and safe zones, the best starting clothing sets, the events that take place on the island from time to time, the animals and NPCs you'll encounter, the day-night cycle, what to expect from encounters with other players, how to protect yourself from other players, how and where to get all kinds of resources, how the crafting menu works, getting food, where you should build a base, what base design you should build, what things you need in your base, what blueprints are and how to get them, and finally I'll show you how to get your first gun. So let's get started. So let's start by talking about the environment of Rust Island. You can see your map by pressing and holding G and on it you will see quite a few things. Your current location on the map is marked by this yellow circle with an arrow in it. You'll see monuments on the map along with their names and you'll see roads connecting them. You will also see shops marked by these green circles with shopping carts in them. As you look around the map you will also see the three different biomes. The temperate biome which covers most of the island and is the only place where plants grow in the wild. The desert biome which is hot during the day and cold during the night. The only plants that grow here are cactuses but overall it's not a bad place to live. And the snow biome which can only be described as really cold all around so you should avoid this unless you have some form of clothing. Related to biomes in the map let's talk about monuments in Rust. Monuments are one of the primary focuses of Rust as they are the places where you can get the most loot from crates and most of them also have a few services that you can use. By services I mean recyclers where you can break down items for raw materials, repair benches where you can repair and skin your items, oil refineries where you can turn crude oil into low grade fuel, and research benches where you can use scrap to get the blueprints of items. I won't be covering monuments in depth, so if you're interested in more information about a monument then click the card in the top right corner now for a playlist of my videos about the different monuments. There are four tiers of monuments, one of them is small monuments which include the abandoned cabins, the abandoned supermarket, Oxum's gas station, the mining outpost and the lighthouse. These places have no radiation at all and contain a small amount of loot, green key cards which are used in puzzles, and a surface or two that you can use. The monuments from all tiers above small monuments except for the junkyard and the harbors have radiation which you shouldn't really worry about as all you need to do is put on clothes and in your inventory you can see the amount of radiation protection you have. A radiation protection of around 11 is sufficient for low tier monuments and a radiation protection of around 22 is sufficient for most monuments in the game. But if you start getting radiation poisoning, remember to just take a 180 degree turn and walk away and the effect of radiation poisoning will wear off quickly. You should also know that these electrical substations also have radiation in their areas. To prevent you from getting radiation poisoning, I'll quickly show you the best low tier gear sets you can use at this level. You can use a full set of burlap which includes burlap gloves, boots, pants, shirt and head wrap for a total of 65 cloth and this set will grant you 11 radiation protection. And if you want more radiation protection you can also use this set which includes burlap gloves, pants, shirt, a wood armor helmet, pants and chest plate and a bandana. This set will cost you 65 cloth, 700 wood and 2 rope and will give you 22 radiation protection. Hazmat suits are also really good as early to mid game armor and also have the highest radiation protection in the game that a set of clothes can provide you, which is 50. There are also a few monuments in Rust that have safe zones. You can tell which monuments these are by going on the map and seeing if they have a shop marked by a shopping cart in a green circle. Safe zones are places where you can deal or take damage from other players. The outpost and bandit camp also have a few services and things you can do. A few events also take place on the island from time to time, but if you're new to the game you should ignore these, as they usually attract a lot of PvP. The only one that might affect you is the patrol helicopter, which roams around the island and shoots geared players. If you hear it approaching you, just take off all of your clothing items and remove weapons from your hotbar and it will just fly past you. There are also animals on the island which you can hunt for food. The five kinds of animals on the island are chickens, deer, wolves, boars and bears. Out of these five animals, wolves, boars and bears will attack you, so if you don't have anything you can protect yourself with, you should probably stay away from them. Horses also exist in the game but they are merely used as a means of transport. Another kind of hostile NPCs are scientists, 
which will shoot at you if you damage them or if you get too close. You can tell them apart from regular players by their clothing, which is a blue hazmat suit which can't be obtained by players. Before we move on to anything else, I quickly want to tell you about the day-night cycle in Rust. A complete cycle lasts for 1 hour and consists of 45 minutes of day and 15 minutes of night. The thing you should know about nights in Rust is that they are pitch black except for when there's a full moon, so you usually end up staying in your base for the duration of the night. Now let's talk about what you should expect from encounters with other players. Well, unfortunately for you, you shouldn't expect anything nice, as most of the time players in this game will kill you on sight, so you should probably avoid encounters with them. Here are a few common things you'll encounter as a fresh spawn. Rock fights on the beach, a random guy chasing you while screaming that he's friendly, who then proceeds to kill you if you stop, random guys chasing you for 5 minutes straight, as apparently they have nothing better to do, and fully geared players shooting you for your 200 wood. Fortunately, most of these problems can be solved easily by using weapons to protect yourself from other players. As a fresh spawn, the main weapons you'll be using to protect yourself are spears and bows. Spears can be crafted for 300 wood in 30 seconds, and bows can be crafted for 200 wood and 50 cloth, and arrows for your bow can be crafted in sets of 2 for 25 wood and 10 stones per set. Now I'll show you guys where you can get resources. The most obvious thing is getting wood from trees. The only thing that's special about them is that you should always hit the red X on the tree if you want to cut down the tree as soon as possible. Getting stone isn't too hard either, you just have to know what to look for. Stone can be obtained by mining these grey nodes, and similar to when you're cutting down trees, you should always hit the glowing sweet spot on the node, which allows you to mine the node faster. For metal, you need to mine these orangish nodes, and for sulfur, you need to mine these yellowish green ones. If you're struggling to find nodes to mine, you should look around rock formations, hills and mountains, as quite a few nodes can spawn in these places. When mining metal and sulfur, you'll be getting ores which you can smelt in a furnace. I'll show you how to smelt items efficiently in a different part of the video. You can also get small amounts of wood, stone, metal and sulfur by picking up these small collectible versions of them shown on screen now. When mining nodes or chopping down trees, keep in mind that stone tools give you significantly more resources than if you do things with a rock, so craft them as soon as you can. A stone hatchet and pickaxe cost a total of 400 wood and 200 stone, so they're not even expensive. You can get cloth by collecting these plants. You can get low-grade fuel by either hunting animals, harvesting them and crafting it from animal fat and cloth, or you can loot fuel barrels and refine the crude oil into low-grade fuel. You can get components for crafting from harvesting barrels and looting crates, and I'll show you how to get scrap later on in the video. Now that you have resources, you can start crafting things, so I'll quickly show you around the crafting menu. On the left side, you can browse items by categories, at the bottom in the middle, you can search the names of items you want to craft. On the right side, you will be able to see the item's short description, the stats of the item, and the skins you can apply for the item in question. In center at the top, you will also see if a workbench is required to craft the item, and if yes, then what level of workbench. And finally, in the top right corner of the crafting menu, you can see two numbers, the amount of time it takes to craft the item, and how many items you will be getting upon crafting. This number is usually more than one for different kinds of ammunition. Along with different kinds of resources, you probably also want to know where you can get food in the game, as the panic onset by your rapidly decreasing hunger bar sets in. First of all, calm down, as hunger only deals a rather small amount of damage to you over time, and getting food is not hard at all. There are three ways of getting food in Rust, going to rivers which have a lot of plants you can harvest for food, you can also find food in the wild in the form of mushrooms and forests. Mushrooms can only be found on this darker soil, so keep that in mind when looking for them. You can also go to the outskirts of the closest monument, where you can find food crates scattered around, and you can also find food crates inside Oxum's gas station and the abandoned supermarket. And you can also go hunting and cook the meat at a campfire. Also, eating the meat of other players might seem like a good idea, but even when cooked, it dehydrates you and is not worth it. And if you're wondering where you can get water, you can drink it from rivers or lakes and you can also find water in food crates and bottles and jerry cans. Now that you know the basics of the map and how to get resources, I'll show you how to choose a base location. To determine the correct location for your base, open up your map and search for areas that are close to a few monuments and preferably a safe zone where you can recycle, aka the outpost or the bandit camp. 
So for example, on this map I'd build somewhere around Q6 to R7. Before I show you what base you should build and how, here are the items and resources you will need to make your base. You will need a building plan and a hammer, a tool cupboard, two wooden doors, three key locks, around a thousand wood, and around 6,000 stone. Now that you have the things you need to build your base, let's get building. First of all, place down four regular foundations like this, and then attach a triangle foundation to where you want your main door to be. Next, place down the walls of your base all around, but leave the places of the doors empty as shown in the video. Next, place down the doorways. Next, place a triangle floor here, and four regular floors above the foundations. Now, go around the base and upgrade everything to stone. You can upgrade things by holding right click with the hammer. Once you have everything upgraded, place the door in the outside frame and place a key lock on it. Once you've placed the key lock, don't forget to lock it by holding E on it and selecting lock. And repeat the step for the other door. If you want multiple people to be able to open the door, you can use code locks instead. Next, place down this wall to divide your base a little, as open floor plans are not optimal in Rust. Place down your TC in the very corner and lock it with a key lock. Finally, place your leftover resources into the tool cupboard so your base doesn't decay. Keep in mind that you need materials inside the tool cupboard so your base doesn't decay. You can see how much resources you need per 24 hours inside the tool cupboard. Also, while you're building, make sure to not place a wall the wrong way as it is a common mistake beginners make. The smooth side should be the one facing you. Once you have a base, you should place down a sleeping bag inside as sleeping bags allow you to respawn while you place them. If you want to improve the safety of your base, you should place down more doors and switch existing doors to metal ones. Now that you have a base, I'll show you what things you should have in there. The most obvious things are small and large boxes, as you can use them to store items. Small boxes cost 100 wood and large boxes cost 250 wood and 50 metal fragments. When placing them down, all you need to pay attention to is that you squeeze them as tightly next to everything else as possible, so you can have the highest amount possible. You should also place at least one furnace, which can be used to smelt ores into usable resources. The way you should place items into a furnace is one slot for fuel, three slots for the ore you're smelting, and two empty slots for the product, which are gonna be the smelted resource and charcoal. Keep in mind that you can only smelt one kind of ore at a time in a furnace if you want to smelt things efficiently. In the early game, you will also need a level 1 workbench, which can be crafted for 500 wood, 100 metal fragments, and 50 scrap. Later on in the game, you will need to replace your workbench with a higher level 1 if you want to craft better items. If a workbench is required to craft an item, then to be able to craft it, you need to stand close to the workbench. You also need a research bench, which you can use to get the blueprints for items. A research bench costs 200 metal fragments and 20 scrap. And you should also consider getting yourself a barbecue if you go hunting frequently to cook the raw meat. Another primary focus of Rust are blueprints, which allow you to craft items, but not all items require a blueprint to be crafted. Blueprints can be acquired in two different ways. You can either research items at a research bench using scrap, or you can get blueprints by unlocking them from the tech tree, which you can find by pressing E on workbenches and clicking the open tech tree button. You can get scrap by farming barrels on the road, by going to monuments, or by recycling components at a recycler. If you want to know more about how to get scrap fast in Rust, click the card in the top right corner of your screen now. Finally, I'll show you how to get your first gun. There are multiple ways of doing this. The first way is to go in the tech tree and unlock it from there. With this approach, a revolver will cost you 565 scrap, but you can also get a water pipe shotgun for 395 scrap, and a double barrel shotgun for 520 scrap in total from the tech tree. Another way of getting a revolver and researching it is by going to the outpost, buying one from the venting machine, and researching it at the research bench. When researching, you should also keep in mind to research pistol bullets so you can craft ammo for your revolver. This method costs a total of 350 scrap. You can also try finding a gun in crates. If you want to find out which monuments to go to, click the video in the top right corner of your screen now. And once you have your gun, you just have to research it along with the ammo and you're good to go. So that's it from me, I've been Memish, and if this guide helped you, consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you really enjoy my content, you can join my Discord server and chat with me, or you can become a channel member by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. I would like to thank Bothered Nickel, Greg Danger, and RustyDO for supporting me, 
And thank you guys so much for over 7,500 subscribers.